Hi, this is Reagan Cypher. Welcome to my review of the Edifier W220T. The W220T, or Lollipods 3 as they seem to be known in China, are Edifier's latest semi-in-ear release, retailing at around $59.99 US dollars. The first semi-in-ear buds that I've reviewed that feature Snapdragon Sound. Snapdragon Sound is the collective name of a suite of features available to Snapdragon 888 processor phones and above, and it includes 24-bit 96K audio through that Aptex Adaptive codec, the lowest latency of any Qualcomm so far, Aptex Voice, which is designed to improve the clarity of your voice by doubling the amount of bandwidth available for calls, and rock solid connectivity courtesy of Qualcomm Fast Connect and True Wireless. Snapdragon Sound is a little bit of a mystery, it's not like a codec where you can go in and select it and you know that you're using it, you just have to kind of trust Qualcomm that it's been initiated. And given it's only supported by a handful of mobile phones manufactured by vendors who seem allergic to mentioning it in their marketing paraphernalia, you can understand and why the buzz for this has fallen a little bit flat. Firstly, you're gonna need an 888 processor or above. So if that deems you eligible, head over to aptex.com, which I found to be the most up-to-date list of supported devices, and check to see if yours is on the list. Some popular models there include the Asus Zenfone 9, quite a few of the Motorola Moto Edge series. You've also got some models in there from Vivo and Nubia, Red Magic as well, which we don't tend to see too much here in the UK, and quite a few of the newer Xiaomi releases, and that's what I'll be using for this test, an 11T Pro. Some of the other features include 24 hours of battery life, which seems to be the magic number when it comes to semi-in-ear designs. On the back, you've got some more of the key features for this release, including dual mic noise cancellation, which marries up hand in hand with that Aptex voice feature. You've got game mode, voice assistant and IP54 dust and water resistance. Remember IP54 is only splash proof, you'll be fine in the rain but don't go swimming with them. Semi and ear releases are rarely awash with features but it was good to see that 6 hour single use playtime which is pretty high compared to the rest of the market and also quick charge, you've got one hour's worth of playtime from 10 minutes worth of juice. For me, this is an absolutely essential feature and I'm always pleased when I see earbud vendors including it. The QR in the corner takes you through to the app. There'll be more on that later. Other than the Neobuds Pro, which they really went all out for, the unboxing experience with Edifier is still very pleasant, has a kind of premium feel to it, and it wouldn't look out of place giving these as a gift. I mentioned the Snapdragon sound feature earlier, the W220T are utilizing the Qualcomm QCC3056 chipset in order to facilitate that, including the Aptex voice feature, which improves the bandwidth available for your voice on Zoom calls, cell calls, etc. It's these features that have persuaded Edifier to position them at a slightly higher MSRP than their competition, the likes of the Soundbeats Air 3 and One More Comfort Buds 2, retailing around $59.99 US dollars. Accessories are somewhere where you can claw back some of that margin as there's no spare tips. You do get your usual USB Type A to C charge cable, and the small monochrome manual is an impressive something like 14 different languages. It's a sign of Edifier going global. They've definitely improved this element from something like the NB2, which I reviewed all those years ago. The Chinglish has been cut out and they use text and diagrams to very good effect. All of the instructions are pretty clear. They've included the control scheme in the manual as well. The only area of ambiguity is that single squeeze at the top where you've just got a musical note. Not really sure what that means. I found out that it was play and pause, not volume control, unfortunately, although you can customize the controls in the Edifier app, albeit with some limitations, which you will see when we go through the app later on. Only minor complaint is Edifier left off the percentages of charge remaining in the case, corresponding to the different colors of the case LED. Usually we get something like green is above 70%, amber is between 20 and 70, and red is 20 or below. But there's nothing like that in the manual, so we're gonna have to try and guess, I'm afraid. The array of languages in the manual includes Turkish, Danish and a few that I couldn't even begin to understand. So hats off to Edify here for at least trying to cater for the global market. Overall, it's a pretty nice functional unboxing from Edify that doesn't try and be too extravagant, but gives you all the basics that you need with a solid and easy to understand instruction manual. Initial impressions of the case, it's glossy white, it's pretty compact and it's reasonably high quality plastic. 
That said, when you flip it over, you notice some of the tolerances aren't quite perfect. Even so, I shared my pocket with my keys for the last three weeks and there's no signs of any scratches or anything like that so far. The Bauhaus simplistic design means you've just got a single traffic light style case battery LED at the front along with a lip to flip the case open. And when you do, you get a single pulse in green and then in white to denote that the buds have connected with your device. The case has all switch modes, so there's no need to take the buds out of the case in order to initiate that connection. Here, for some reason, I was getting a green LED on the case when it wasn't plugged in, but then an amber LED when I did plug it into charge. So either there's a different schema when it's on charge or the sensors aren't quite calibrated. Either way, the approximate indication is very useful. On the back, you've got a large white button to reset the pairing or initiate pairing for the first time. When you hold that down, you'll notice the LED on the front of the case will flash very briefly in green and white. That denotes that the pairing process has been initiated. So grab your smartphone, head to available devices in your Bluetooth settings and look for Edify W220T. It's a point of note, this name can be changed in the app. Even on non-Snapdragon sound devices, it will default to that Aptex adaptive codec. Edify have clearly put some thought into the case with their friction hinge, which despite the back making it look like the tolerances weren't great, so it works really well and hand in hand with that hall switch mode means you can pop them open on the desk when you go through that pairing process without the lid snapping shut which is really useful. The compact case has a similar albeit slightly smaller profile than the Apple AirPods. It measures approximately 55mm in width, around 45mm in height and around 25 mil in depth and it weighs just over 40 grams fully loaded it's one of the lightest and most compact cases i've tested so far and it's ideally suited for popping in your trouser pockets case gives you an additional three charges taking up to an advertised 24 hours i found myself getting just under 22 hours in total that was with quite a few voice calls and the aptex adaptive codec initiated I think that's not bad at all for a semi in earbud. There's no wireless charging, but you have got quick charge, giving you two hours from 20 minutes worth of juice. And that, coupled with the well thought out compact design, makes this a very impressive case from Edifier. So good, I'm willing to overlook those ugly hinges on the back. The W220T is a semi or half in ear design that has some similarities to the Apple AirPods. The stems are around 27mm in length, so definitely on the shorter side, extending up to 32mm when you include the nozzle. Along the stem, you've got the Edifier branding at the bottom. At the top, the ambient noise reduction mic is protected by a fine dustproof mesh. Back to the bottom, and you've got the charging connectors at the base, and to the side of them, a cutout for Edifier's pinch controls. I wasn't sure what to make of this type of control on a semi in earbud, but I have to say the controls work really well and they don't impact on stability whatsoever. By default it's single pinch for play and pause, double pinch for next track and then triple pinch for your previous track. Whilst there's no volume control by default, as you saw there, I've been able to customize the controls through the Edifier Connect app. They're fully customizable too, which you'll see when we go through the app later on in the review, and this gets around the problem of not being able to adjust the volume from the buds out of the box. With semi-in earbuds, comfort and stability are two of the most important facets, and I have to say Edifier have done a very good job of ensuring both of those with the design of a W220, with the curvature of the nozzle in particular playing a major part. When you compare this with something like the Feel Key, which I reviewed a few months ago, you notice the nozzle on that particular model just runs perpendicular, it isn't shaped downwards, and as a result, unless you had really small ears, the Feel Key could feel quite unstable. It's not the case with the W220T. Curvature, shape and size of the model and the weight displacement makes it suitable for ears of all sizes really. This clever design is where Edifier have put Feel and many other semi-in earbud vendors to the sword. And it's interesting how such a minor deviation, bear in mind they're a very similar stem length, can have such a bearing on the stability. As a result, the W220T did far better in the shape test than most other models which I've tested. And because of the placement of the touch controls, if you do need to make any micro adjustments, 
then you can rest assured that you're not going to initiate those controls and skip your track or something like that. And despite the lack of curvature at the top of the stem, they don't stick out like something like the Basius S2 Simu do. Pleasingly, style has not been traded for substance. The output of the 13mm drivers is in half, so you've got a kind of bridge in between the two speaker sections. I assume it's purely cosmetic, but that and the two-part stem and nozzle mean Edify have put their own stamp on their design rather than just copying the Apple AirPods in the way that QCY did with their T20. The buds are only IP54, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's worth remembering it's fine for a splash of rain and you've got that added dust protection, which Edify have added in there too. The market is kind of hotting up a little bit when it comes to semi-in earbuds. We've had some pretty good releases now from the likes of Soundbeats, Soundcore, Tronsmart, One More, and QCY, all of which I've reviewed over at ReaganCypher.com, but I have to say, the Edifier W220T is probably the best in terms of the design, the stability and comfort as well. You can wear these for long periods and you never really feel them hanging in your ears. The controls are well thought out and in terms of their placement, you know, definitely not as prone to accidental touches as something like the Soundbeats Air 3 and the stem length balances out being close enough to your mouth to pick up your voice for calls with not being too long that it feels unwieldy and a little bit imbalanced in your ear like something like the One More Comfort Buds 2, the Phil CC2 and even the Transmart Onyx Ace Pro at times. So hats off to Edify here, they've managed to get the ergonomics, design and fit bang on the money. It's often the case with semi and earbuds that the lower frequencies fall a little bit short of where we would like them to be. Because there's no seal, a bass response tends to just dissipate. And if I haven't even tried to tune the sub bass to compensate for that, instead they've allowed a very gentle mid bass rumble, room to breathe rather than having a congested lower frequency response. Compared with something like the One More Comfo Buds 2, which started to really distort in those lower frequencies. As a result, the sound signature is bright has very crispy trebles. Although the earbuds are quite quiet, you have to have the volume around 80% really. And when you do turn it up, you notice that the audio delivery is a little bit underwhelming considering we have this Snapdragon sound. They've avoided that kind of metallic layering that you sometimes sense on earbuds of this style. But even so, tracks can still feel pretty thin and you're certainly not going to get that dynamic response which you'll get with the leader in this market, the Soundpeats Air 3. Resolution is okay, but sometimes it's difficult to get a sense of depth with semi-in earbuds due to them resting quite loose in your ear and giving the perception of an open soundstage. When you listen closer, it isn't necessarily as open as you would think. The buds support the SBC, Aptex and Aptex adaptive codecs. And I noticed that on the Xiaomi 11T Pro, which supports that Snapdragon sound and 96K 24-bit audio, there was definitely improvement in clarity over Aptex on my Pixel 6a, although it certainly wasn't as chasmic as the marketing around Snapdragon sound seems to suggest. Don't get me wrong, the sound certainly isn't terrible, especially for this form factor. However, the relatively high price tag and the inclusion of Snapdragon sound can perhaps sway your expectations into being a little bit higher than they actually perform. Sound is pretty average, lots of reasons to buy the W220T, but audio delivery unfortunately isn't one of them. Okay, so testing the Edifier W220T in an indoor environment with absolute silence. So this is the kind of performance that you would expect if you needed to use your headphones to go and do a video call interview or you're doing a presentation and you've got nothing going on in the background you deliberately try to make it as quiet as possible so that you can convey your voice in the best possible way once again that is the edifier w220t once again the edifier w220t with some simulated background noise introduced into this indoor test environment Probably still a little bit quiet, but it's what you would expect maybe in an office where you've got distant chatter, but not too much going on nearby. I'm interested to hear how it sounds. That's the Edifier W220T. Okay, it's a tough test for the Edifier W220T. We've introduced some simulated background noise and made sure that the source is nearby to try and recreate what it would be like if you were taking or making a call in a very busy office corridor something like that coffee shop maybe 
where that ambient sound is not only in the distance but also nearby. I would expect the 220T, like most earbuds on the market, to struggle the most in this environment, but let's wait and see. I'll be interested to hear how it sounds. Once again, the Edifier W220T. Next up, we have the Edifier W220T. I'm at my busy intersection here in Surrey outdoor environment. The rain is coming down quite a bit and we've got wind noises going on as well. Lots of traffic going past and you'll hear, or maybe you will, maybe you won't, hear the splashes of puddles as well where those cars are coming through. We've got a number of different environmental sounds that are designed to try and make it commensurate with your daily commute if you're walking to work or walking to college or the train station, even as we have a train station here nearby and I have heard at least one well, at least one sound when I've been recording these come through where a train has gone past on that bridge you can see in the background. Otherwise, it's gone a little bit quiet, although we've got some lorries coming through now from a detour which has occurred on the motorway. It's British weather for you. Everything just shuts down. There's some power tools going on as well in the background, which you'll maybe hear at a distance, sanding disc or something like that. So otherwise, yeah, this is what you would expect on your daily commute. That is the Edifier W220T Outdoor Test. App support is becoming increasingly more common, even with budget buds. So it wasn't a surprise, although it's definitely welcome to see it on the W220T. Edifier Connect is available for both iPhone and Android, and it's available in the App Store. You don't have to go digging around to find an APK. Ignore the annoying reminder about having a pop-up function enabled in order to use Bluetooth. It's a red herring. You can still use it without any problems. Very quickly, you'll get this screen pop-up saying Snapdragon Sound. This is pretty much the only indication that you're using Snapdragon Sound in any way. Although this is also a bit of a red herring because it also popped up on my OnePlus 8T that doesn't actually support Snapdragon Sound. It stays on the screen for a couple of seconds and then you're introduced to the Welcome to Edify Connect page. There's not much to do here other than adding a widget. So cast your eyes to the bottom of the screen where you've got four different sections, starting with headphones. By tapping this, you'll very quickly see once again that Snapdragon Sound logo in the top left hand corner your model number at the top and in the center a picture of the buds the case and how much battery is remaining in each note that in order to see the remaining capacity of the charge case the buds have to be inserted into the cockpit otherwise it will show as offline on this screen you've also got play and pause controls provided you've got media playing just above you'll see three dots and you swipe left and right to go through those associated screens first swipe to the right and you'll see the four eq presets which you've got available unfortunately there's no custom eq and all four of the presets sounded pretty much the same. Swipe to the right again to toggle gaming mode. This is the only way you can actually hail gaming mode with the default control scheme. You get close to lip sync on videos with gaming mode off. With gaming mode on, latency is much more impressive on games with no obvious degradation in the sound quality. Tapping the hexagon in the top right hand corner of the screen takes you through to the bud settings. This is where the magic happens. You've got a lot of options here. Tapping the edit icon next to the W220T allows you to change the pairing name. Some of the standout options include adjusting the pressure sensitivity setting on the pinch controls. I didn't notice too much of a difference when you adjusted this and 8 is pretty much the optimum anyway. You don't get too many voice prompts but you can adjust the volume of that. I know that will please some people who find it annoying. It doesn't really bother me but you've got the option there anyway. Control settings allows you to customize those pinch controls. You're stuck with play and pause for single pinch. You can't adjust that unfortunately but you can adjust everything else including individual customizations for left and right. It allows you to add in stuff like volume control and gaming mode so you don't have to go back to the app. And the controls don't reset when you move to another device. They seem to be stored within the earbuds themselves. Certainly that was the case when I switched from one Android device to another. You've also got the ability to set a shutdown timer in increments up to 90 minutes. Kind of useful to see this feature, although not on this model because I couldn't see you falling asleep in these. They're definitely not for side sleepers. You've also got the ability here to bring up the user manual. That could be quite useful if you need to double check on the controls. The text is quite small, but it's still legible and it's still a useful feature to have. So some pretty nice features there, especially the customizable controls, although it would have been nice to have seen a custom EQ. Hopefully they can introduce this at a later date. So to summarize, a lot to like about the W220T. The case and bud ergonomics and functions are excellent. 
The fit is very secure, very stable and extremely comfortable. Quick charge feature, very useful. Single use playtime and full playtime with the case, both amongst the best on the market for semi in earbuds. Despite the inclusion of Aptex voice, Whilst they perform okay on calls, certainly better outdoors than indoor, as soon as you introduce any environmental sound, it doesn't nullify it altogether. It just kind of makes it high pitched. And despite the inclusion of Snapdragon sound, the bright sound signature lacks a dynamism of something like the Soundpeats Air 3. And the constraints of the form factor mean you're not getting any great imaging or resolution. Despite this, I found myself turning back to the W220T repeatedly over the last month of testing. The Snapdragon sound is a little bit of a gimmick and the price tag is a little bit high, but for us semi and ear disciples who are used to making compromises, if you're happy to relinquish excellent audio for all those conveniences I mentioned at the beginning of the summary, then the W220T might just fit the bill. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the review. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed it and punch some comments in the comments section below with your thoughts on the Edifier W220T. And make sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts on future reviews, unboxings, ANC tests, call quality tests, etc. For now, this is Reagan Cypher signing off.